what is a good thing to do immediately after you tie your fishing lure on? That's before you make your next cast too, by the way. <laughs> Good morning, guys and girls. March 30, March 30. Good life, gosh, March 30. March 30, we're looking at the book of Jimmy. The book of Jimmy, James 1, 14. <laughs> James 1, 14, oh, this is a good one. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Reading out of our Catch a Better Life book, our new book, Catch a Better Life. You can order that on jimmyhouston.com. Each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Here's what I wrote about that. Little tiny jigs with small soft plastic attached have always been nearly irresistible to fish. I can remember finishing second place to Jerry Ryan in a BASS tournament on Lake Washita in Arkansas way back in 1981. What is that? That's 40 years ago. 40 years ago plus. 1981. By the way, I didn't know who finished second in that tournament. <laughs> I didn't know who finished second. We were talking about fishing those little tiny jigs and we were talking about the fact that we fished them since we were in high school back in the, back in the 60s and uh, in late 50s actually in 60s when we were in high school fishing these little tiny jigs and we did a lot here on Lake Ten Killer, a little tiny jig with just the tail end of a plastic worm. We didn't have many plastic worms back in those days and so we would take just the little tail end of them and, uh, and put them on a little tiny jig and fish them around the bluffs and stuff on light line, usually uh, sometimes on a Zebco 33 on light line and we would just smoke the bass, just smoke them. We catch crappie and catfish and everything else on them too, just like they do nowadays. But uh, I was telling that story to somebody about using those tiny jigs and little soft plastics and finishing second place in that tournament. And, uh, and, 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 and uh, one of my buddies was standing par beside me and he said, you remember who finished third in that tournament? And I said, yeah, you know, I really don't remember who finished third in that tournament. I know Jerry won it and I got second. And he said, I finished third place in that tournament. And it was Hank Parker. <laughs> That's right, Hank Parker. It's amazing that you don't remember who finished right behind you. You sure can remember who beat you, though. And uh, Actually, and, and Hank told me, I didn't know it at the time, but Hank told me that uh, him and Jerry was fishing the same water, the same water. So that's pretty amazing. They had a pretty good spot found, way better than the spot I had found uh, for sure. But uh, my fish came on, uh, my fish in that tournament came on what today is called a Ned Rig, a tiny jig and hook with a small worm attached. You want to entice a finicky bass, your go-to uh, finesse bait, that'd be it right there for me. Try that combination, a small jig with a little piece of plastic of some sort tied onto it. In Greek, in Greek, the phrase drawn away describes animals that are trapped and drawn away to their deaths. Animals that are trapped and drawn away. That's what drawn away means. When, when each one is tempted, and when he is drawn away, that's what this scripture says, drawn away to their deaths, enticed, enticed is a fishing term, it's meaning caught with bait, caught with bait. That's in Greek. Like a fish with a little Ned rig, we are often tempted by something that seems really, really small at first. It doesn't seem like any big deal to us. It seems small at first, something that, that's a little bitty deal that we're tempted by. Then we feed the temptation. We feed that temptation with our own desires, just like this scripture says. He's drawn away by his own desires, by his own desires, such as lust, lust, the sin of the flesh that leads ultimately to adultery. And lust for other worldly pleasures and things, things that belong to other people, things that we can't afford, lust for the worldly pleasures. pleasures. As with animals and fish, something small, something small often will lead to death. Can I tell you, adultery has led to death for many, many, many people. So, turn to God when you face temptation. When something tempts you, even a little temptation, whatever it might be, uh, I could name temptation after temptation after temptation. Jesus was even tempted. Obviously, you and I are tempted all the time. I mean, it's just something that comes with being, being alive. When you're tempted, Turn to God. Lay that temptation at the foot of the cross. Ask God. Ask God. Get him involved. Ask God. He's got your Holy Spirit, His Holy Spirit right here inside of you. Ask God to help you through 
help you through that temptation. Here's our tip for today. It's a good one. It's always good to wet your knots. That's right, wet your knots on monofilament line and copolymer line before clenching them down. Why do we do that? Why do we wet our line? We do that because when we cinch a knot down, we, we cinch it down process creates a little heat. It puts a little heat on that line. Heat destroys monofilament line. You don't want to leave your, your, your rods laying in the back window of your pickup or the back of your car or something like that where it gets really, really hot. Uh, don't, don't, don't have your rods in there and leave them in there on a really hot day. Heat destroys fishing line. So you want to wet that knot down, put it in your mouth a little bit, wet it down, and then cinch it down. I cinch them down slowly. Let that knot form and cinch down and tie, and I pull it really, 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 really tight. Guys and girls, go out there and have you a great one today, and remember, I sure do love you.